Good evening to all of you all. The two day 47th uh, GST Council meeting ended just half an hour ago. It was a two day session and uh, It was a two-day session. Is it all right now? And uh, in fact, uh, I expected it to run till about five or six o'clock. It did conclude earlier than expected. But uh, it did conclude earlier than expected after having finished all the agenda which was on the table and also one extra agenda which came in. This is after six months of uh, the last meeting. The last one was on 31st December, but on a specific agenda, I think, on textiles. But otherwise, we had, her, had the earlier meeting only in September and post that. Uh, this is the regular meeting, and uh, that is one of the reasons why, because there were so many things that we had done in between, we had scheduled it for two days. The, in a way, the highlight of these two days meeting was that we could consider, discuss, and take a decision on four GOM reports. So, I, I've been watching uh, very keenly the media reportage before today. Your focus was probably on just one, or probably lately on the second as well, but the third and the fourth probably didn't draw your attention. So this uh, GST 47th meeting, spread over two days, really did justice for the good work that the group of ministers have done on four different matters. So I'll quickly highlight the four GOMs, which essentially uh, were the core business agenda before us. And there were uh, other few things uh, where some detailing had to be done on uh, certain decisions which were taken earlier. So all that has been handled in this two days. Uh, even before I start, I want to highlight the fact three administrations were together in holding this, the Union Territory of Chandigarh, Government of Punjab, and also Haryana, which was also indicated by the fact that last evening the dinner was hosted by the Chief Minister of Haryana for the entire GST Council and its Secretariat staff. Uh, this afternoon's lunch was hosted by Punjab's chief minister. And uh, Chandigarh, the Union Territory, has been actively engaged in coordinating between the two administration and also with us. So I would want to uh, mention here and a word of appreciation for the excellent coordination the three of them had among themselves and the way in which we had a very smooth two-day GST meeting. So thanks entirely to the three administrations which worked together, and it was like a breeze. So that's a very big uh, note of appreciation for all the three. Now, the four GOMs which I want to highlight before you, first flag it off, then I can get into the details. Revenue Secretary also can come into it. The four GOMs which are uh, which were discussed relate to one which has now become popularly known as Rate Rationalization Committee or group, which was headed by the Chief Minister of Karnataka, which also looked at not just rate rationalization, it looked at exemptions, it also looked at correction of inversion. And in today, yesterday's and today's meeting, it was the inversion meaning the correction of inversion and exemptions that was taken up. 
the rate rationalization aspect of it, which is the third point of that uh, GOM, has not yet been taken up. And for that, the GOM has been given an extension of time. So that is about that GOM. The second GOM related to the betting, gambling, casinos, horse trading, um, horse racing, uh, and lottery. So they have gone into the details. Uh, Chief Minister of Meghalaya was the <clears throat> chair of that uh, GOM. They have also submitted so the uh, one minute. So the first one, where of the three items, only two was uh, tabled, called that report. Although on the two, it was final. The third one, they needed an extension. So on the two, where they submitted the report, the committee of Chief Minister Bommai called it an interim report. But that interim report pertained only to these two where the findings and recommendations were final. So it called itself interim because that one aspect was yet to be taken up for which they've got a separate extension. The second one, which is Conrad Sangma's group, which looked into uh, betting, gambling and so on, gave its report on all the three which it considered, the casinos, the online gaming, horse racing, and uh, they gave a final report, and on that there were discussions. I'll come to what happened after that in a minute. The third group of minister is on IT-related and technology-related matters, which was headed by uh, Deputy Chief Minister of Maharashtra. They've also submitted their report. They've gone into great details about what are the kind of uh, uh, corrections that the system can do, how to improve. I'll give you the details a bit. So that was the third GOM. The report has been given. And the fourth GOM, about which probably not much of uh, attention was paid, is about movement of precious metals, particularly gold, which was under discussion for quite some time. Kerala's finance minister was the head of it, and that report has also been uh, tabled, discussed. So on the four, they were elaborate discussions spread over these two days. And the recommendations given on the items one and two of the Bombay committee have been accepted, and those decisions, specifics, will also be covered under the detailed press note for you elaborated one or two things which we'll highlight to you now. The second, uh, the one pending of theirs will be obviously given more time. They will be taking it up again. So that the exemptions and the inversion correction has been in total accepted and they will be implemented. The details I'll share with you. The second was the Conrad Sangma on uh, online gaming and also on uh, horse racing and uh, casinos. The discussion were essentially on the casino aspect of it, where the finance minister of Goa went into great details about um, why casinos will need a greater detailing, greater understanding, greater different treatment and so on. The one thing which I want to highlight to you all first is whether it is horse racing or online gaming or casinos, the common thread which the committee highlighted was they're all part of betting and gaming. In other words, they are essentially gambling. There may be element of skill in it or element of chance in it, but essentially all the three are gambling. And even by the existing rules, they are treated so, and also treated 
uniformly without any differentiation between one and the other and the third and all of them are taxed at 28 percent. Now this GOM looked at each one of them, heard the various stakeholders and took a call that uh, based on two judgments of the Supreme Court as well, one was on Lotto and the other one was on, uh, I'll tell you, both, in both the cases, the Supreme Court, sorry, Ah, actionable claims. Sunrise Industries had gone to the court and on Sunrise Ind Industries, actionable claims being the point at which the tax will have to be levied was uh, a case with the Supreme Court on which the Supreme Court has up upheld the decision and Lotto was the second one which was also in Supreme Court and the verdict is out. All of this confirmed the existing laws. All of this confirm and uphold the existing law which treats all these gaming, varieties of gaming similarly and the incidence of tax where it is levied also is broadly accepted. Now this uh, GOM therefore, after studying the whole thing, by the fact that that is the only rational way to handle it, handle each one of the three, so, in a way, they were in favor of continuing the status quo. So, then came this issue where, even as he presented the report, the Chief Minister of Meghalaya did say that Goa and its minister requested that he place his view even in, before the entire council, not just the GOM. So he was given an opportunity to speak in front of all the members of the GOM, wherein his request was that the treatment for casino should be different. And therefore it was decided, he did give a complete presentation, therefore it was decided that Conrad Sangma, the chair of that GOM, will once more here Goa and even as this decision was taken, it was felt, some of the members of the GOM felt that if there is a window for casinos to be heard again, let horse riding also be heard again, let online games be also heard again. We've allowed that but with a condition that by July 15th, the report should be back again with us. So the council will then have a look at it. And as a result, we have accepted that the council will meet on this GOM's agenda. And one more, which I'll elaborate a bit later. On this GOM's agenda and one more, either on the 1st of August of this year, or in the first week of August. So for reconsidering the Conrad Sangma report after they meet up with Goa and other stakeholders, the three ministers, they will submit the report by July 15th and the council will meet again to take that on board, consider that in the first week of August. So I come to the third GOM, which is on IT-related matters, which was headed by the Deputy Chief Minister of Maharashtra. Tarun, do you want to elaborate on that? Uh, IT-related. The fourth I'll conclude, and then Tarun can take on, is on the gold, movement of gold where Kerala's minister headed the GOM and he's given the report. Essentially, there was this discussion about movement of gold, whether the number, the Aadhaar card and of the transporter will have to be given, who will take it from one area within the state to another and so on. 
So now on the basis of the recommendation given by that committee, it will be left to the state to decide whether they will take the number, the Aadhaar card or whatever of those vehicles which move, taking precious because it also has a serious security related uh, consideration. So we have gone by the report submitted by Kerala. So these were the four on which IT matter, again uh, Tarun can elaborate. The fifth one was on compensation, says a few states before lunch today said that they would like the compensation to continue, continue for some time. Even as a few other states said, yes, it is a question of coming out of the pandemic, but yet we need to have states also stand on their own. Um, how long can this go on and so on. Post lunch, some other states also wanted to come and join. We thought by lunch it was all over. But when most states wanted to join in, we went in for an hour after lunch. And there were broadly uh, statements being uh, to the sense of compensation can be continued, if not for five years, at least for a few years. So they were that kind of a input on the compensation says. So overall, in sum and substance, this is what happened between yesterday and today. Let uh, Tarun expand on the GOM on IT. Also, uh, we'll get into some specifics, post which, of course, you're welcome to ask questions. Thank you, ma'am. The other GOM which the FM was mentioning is on IT reforms that have made some recommendations on further improvement in the GSTN and use of AI and ML uh, to ensure that we have a better data to, uh, for compliance purposes. As also there is a feeling that there are issues which we have not been able to settle with regard to fake invoice bills, some companies coming up, suddenly showing some spike and then vanishing. So there were about six aspects that were taken up by the GM in the first place and they have made very specific recommendations as to what the GSTN ought to do in this regard and in, in the sense that uh, for example, on the registration, uh, risk-based models will be developed where the risky people, there will be a greater check on them before the registration process itself. So there were these kind of five and five or six, six uh, recommendations which have been accepted and now the GSTN will work on them and in due course will come up with these utilities so that we are able to further use the GSTN network, the AI ML uh, utilities that they'll develop to ensure that we have even better compliance than what we already have. It was also felt that the GSTN has done a commendable job in terms of providing information and building utilities and the compliance has actually gone up which is also visible in the higher revenues that we are getting on month on month basis. But now what more needs to be done? So this is some kind of a permanent GOM which will keep giving these suggestions to uh, the GSTN through the council and the GSTN will keep implementing them. Opening the floor for question answer. First from Chandigarh group. Uh, I will rotate the question from Chandigarh and Delhi panel. Uh, please from Chandigarh request from Chandigarh group. Anyone? Begna. Oh, but uh, the, no, no one raised. The... No, no, from Chandigarh. From Chandigarh. Uh, uh, okay, you are there. Uh, please. Uh, give to uh, yeah Mike. Mike, please in the central row. Uh, please introduce first. Yeah, hi, I'm Vijay C. Roy from Tribune. So my question is, you know, like uh, you mentioned now about rate rationalization. Uh, rationalization. So when the committee is likely to give uh, submit report, 
Is there any timeline? The committee has been given an extension of three months. So we expect that by that time they'll be able to further deliberate on that and give us the recomm uh, their recommendations which can be taken to the council meeting. Second, uh, Meghna, first row. Ma'am, Meghna Mittal from ET Now. Uh, you said this additional agenda of extension of GST compensation says that was raised, was discussed. Is the center going to discuss it amongst themselves and then get back to the states on this, uh, firstly? And secondly, all the rate decisions that have been announced, by when will it be implemented? Well, I've heard, uh, as I said, some states speak. All of us have heard them. At this stage, I've just, I can just only report that much. And uh, on the, yes. Uh, because the center and states have to coordinate for uh, the rate or the exemptions and the other uh, aspects. So 18th of July has been fixed the date on which we would be implementing that. Any question from Chandigarh group? Your turn. Or uh, please, a second. A mid one. Please introduce. Hello, I'm Ankush Kohli from Z Punjab Haryana Himachal. I'm as Harpal Chima, Finance Minister of Punjab, also participated in the council meet. What did it demand for the Punjab? Well, he was one among the states which wanted the compensation says extended. And my second question is this, that uh, as apps, uh, you're talking about as 28% uh, GST uh, is to be considered for the apps, uh, which shows characteristics of gambling. Is this only for the that apps uh, which shows characteristics of gambling or all online apps? Yes, it was for online games. Whichever app promotes online games will be. And that anyway is now going to be reconsidered. And uh, by 15th of July, they'll give a report. Shashir. Delhi. Oh, there was somebody else from. I, I will come back. I'll rotate. Oh, I'm rotating. Okay. okay. Good evening, ma'am. Shishir here. Ma'am, my question is that when you are going for doing away with exemptions and also uh, ideas thing, so rates of many of the items will go up. Considering the rate of inflation is very high, so what kind of inflationary impact you are seeing? Um, first thing, let me say before I'll allow Tarun to expand on. See, inflation is not only your, mine, or any particular state's concern. All ministers who were there are aware of it. They're all looking at the system, keeping that in mind. So decisions taken by the council are not as though are being taken in isolation. So I want the friends in the media to please realize it's a good question to ask, but Elected representatives who are part of the GST council are fully conscious of it when they take their decision on it. Midro, uh, uh, Mike, please take Mike. I am Sajin Sharma from Atprakash newspaper and channel. Uh, my question is ki, how many states want this compensation says to be extended? I don't know whether I counted. There are about 12, 13 states that spoke on this issue. One can't say that all of them actually asked. Some of them actually said that we have to work on systems to wean ourselves away and not be dependent only on the GST compensation says. But if you want, there were about maybe 16, 17 states who spoke in total. In total. My second question relating to this is GST ke liye abhi jo compensation hai uske liye kitne states jo hain abhi wo mang rahe hain abhi aage wohi wohi to uska jawab diya na kul mila kar ke 16 states ne baat kiya compensation ke vishay ke upar unme se aise teen char states bhi the jo bole ki aakhir hum sab apne aap ke pair par khade hone ka bhi seekhna chahiye wagera so 16 mein 16 ke 16 nahi mange मगर 16 बात की है कॉम्पेंसेशन के इश्यू पर नेक्स्ट मैम सॉरी सेकंड क्वेश्चन इज कि जो जीएसटी का उनका पैसा है ऑलरेडी जो भी 
रुका हुआ है वो पैसा स्टेट्स का अभी हम कब तक जारी कर देंगे किसका रुका हुआ है पंजाब का जैसे क्या रुका हुआ है नहीं जीएसटी का कौन सा पैसा वो ऑटोमेटिकली जब कलेक्शन होता है मशीन के द्वारा ही हो जाता है जी उसमें मैं और तरुण बैठ करके इनको रोको उनको दो नहीं करते नेक्स्ट ओके मैं आपको ये बताना चाहूंगा कि जीएसटी कॉम्पनसेशन नहीं ही डेंट आस्क अबाउट कॉम्पनसेशन जीएसटी पैसा ही से जीएसटी का पैसा ओके कॉम्पनसेशन ही डेंट आस्क नेक्स्ट तिम्सी फ्रॉम दिल्ली on 30th uh, june and we heard a few state fm say that maybe center would like to speak to the pm or take a call at the highest political level and then come back with a possible solution so is there a solution to their demands or if there was one i would have told you even at the beginning right a <laughs> uh, gen gentleman from the third row art mein and sadhasa What happens to the difference uh, since it's an excess? What happens? To, is there any uh, uh, concrete idea as to what happens to that money? Because it's it's in a bit of a grey area. Of, it seems it's not in a grey area that has been discussed in the GST Council even when it was decided that we'll borrow and pay, and the law allows you to pay for the compensation which is collected through the cess for five full years. and for the five full years therefore the amount borrowed will have to be repaid and therefore the extension of the cess till march 26 and now therefore the amount collected i mean it's very uh, quick and smart and uh, very sharp of you to tell me that it is going to be in excess of collection uh, in excess of the borrowing collection is going to be in excess of the borrowing let's see after all it's the money which belongs to the council no one person is going to be able to take a neat decision on what happens to the excess the council will decide what should happen to the excess as and when that arises shrimi yeah shrimi chaudhary from business standard ma'am i have i needed two clarity one uh, apart from gom interim report fitman committee also suggested certain rate revision and you know clarity on the services part so when Uh, you will get the details now Because some uh, that is also some accepted indeed. by the council yes yes um, if uh, if i have to answer that in a broader sense in the last two days meeting everything was accepted except that one on the casino which has gone back for relooking at so yes the fitment committee's uh, suggestions before the council where counts uh, were considered by the gst council in full and more or less all of them have been accepted ma'am my uh, one last clarity ma'am on the virtual digital asset fitment committee suggested that it should be given to haryana and karnataka so uh, what should be given to haryana and karnataka the detailed study of virtual digital asset in context of gst uh, it was suggested to give it to haryana and karnataka was it So, uh, ma'am, this. Uh, It's a question. No, ma'am. I'm just asking. If that's the. No, if it was taken like that, a call I would have reported. This has been reported in the from, media, so you should ask Delhi. the media. Uh, whoever <laughs> reported it, please answer, Shrimi. But. Uh, ma'am, that's the Fitman Committee suggestion, actually. No, it may be a Fitman Committee suggestion, but I'm not aware. I didn't bring it to the council, nor was was there a discussion. But if there was a discussion in some Fitman Committee somewhere. चंडीगढ़ चंडीगढ़ ग्रुप प्लीज आई टेक माइक 
uh, revenue compensation period should be extended beyond June 30. So is there any decision on this? What is going to be the fate of this thing? This is, the, this is just the clarity which we wanted. I have answered that question with clarity. Is this going to be extended or not? That is what just answered that question to two of your colleagues. Yeah. Kindly listen to what is happening. Hi, uh, Ma'am Girish, Next, uh, Garish from Delhi. Ma'am Girish from Mint. Uh, Ma'am, since the uh, uh, you know, the GOM on systems has recommended so many measures to improve the efficiency of the GST system, would you still be needing a major rate rationalization exercise which will affect the consumers? Because anyway, if tax evasion is being addressed and revenue buoyancy is there, uh, you know, consumers could probably be. But Girish, I'm surprised you are asking this question. Yeah. See, it's one thing for the technology to correct any anomalies or any kind of uh, inefficiency and therefore have a bearing, positive bearing on the collection. Anyone? But, Malo, uh, no, no, sorry. You don't mind. Sorry. 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 But uh, if you would, you would definitely be cognizant of the fact that the revenue neutral rate, even by the RBI study, has been breached to the disadvantage of the system. Where it was 15.5, which was agreed to be the revenue neutral, it had already come down to 11.8 or 6 or something. That requires a correction because if you're directly linking with buoyancy and then saying this doesn't have to be corrected, the kind of refunds which are going because of inversion, which is getting corrected now, there will be a similar concern about revenue neutrality, as a result of which, again, you're sitting over potential tax uh, yielding points, which have been left there. That's not efficiency of system. So rate rationalization, if it results in an increase, is also making up for, as in when it happens, not today, is also making up for the kind of inefficiencies which have appeared now or the collateral of which is being borne by some other activities in that value chain. So those are sitting quiet waiting for us to do the correction because the collateral of having come down from the neutral rate has hit some sectors. And at a time when we are looking at wanting people to come and invest in every element of the value chain, some are not drawing investments. Only because we've done this in terms of, you know, look at the rate, bring it down, without fully assessing the bearing on the whole system. So rate rationalization is something which the GOM is definitely looking at it from this point of view also. Chandigarh group. Anyone? Anchal from Delhi. Uh, Anchal from Indian Express. Uh, Ma'am, two questions. One on uh, the, uh, the decisions regarding rate uh, inversion correction and withdrawal of exemptions. Is there an assessment of the revenue uh, impact of it? I mean, we'll be saving on the refund outflow and all. And second question is about casinos. You said uh, uh, gaming was uh, classified as, seen as gambling. So is casinos or horse racing. But uh, were there valuation issues? Uh, what were the uh, uh, concerns about uh, casinos taxing it at 28%? Yes. The concern about tax, uh, taxation in casinos were several particularly when it came from the Minister Goa, which has all uh, in its entirety been taken up by the GOM. They've looked into it. If I can take one as an example, one item as an example, not to elaborate on each one of it, is when people go pay money at the counter, at the point of entry into a casino, they pay up some money and get the chips for it, which are tokens like with which you play. The question on uh, which uh, there were a difference of view was, 
if you bought chips for 10,000 rupees and went into the casino, used it for different games, different gambling routines uh, in some sequence and also then had some food, also then allowed your children to uh, you know, enjoy some facilities which are appropriate to them to be given and also played one or two games, some of which you won, some of which you lost. And when you go back to the counter, for instance, to say, I bought chips worth 10,000, but I have spent only chips worth 8,000, I'm giving you back 2,000. The question was, will he be taxed on the 10,000 or will he be taxed on the 8,000 that he actually ended up spending? There were difference of views on that. Like that, there were also questions of whether individual, once he gets into the casino, the various things that he does at each one of them, where there is a payment made and a bill given, can there be a taxation on it? Because that will help in having varying taxation, varying rate of taxation for food something, for drinks something, for something else something. But is that going to be possible practically? So things of this nature, which are getting into the details, in fact, the minister from Goa himself said, I've never been to a casino, but because I needed to understand the various ways in which casinos operate, he said he had to go and find out how the casinos and you know, within the casino what happens and so on. So it was an elaborate discussion on casinos. The inverted duty, uh, the in, uh, inversion which has been corrected, it doesn't mean that if something goes from 5 to 12 that the 7 percent will come because inverted duty also has an embedded tax element. So we don't have a very exact estimate, but yes, hopefully we will have some impact on revenue, but it will not be very, very high. And let me also add this because each one of you is uh, worried about exemptions the rates on some of the items have also been reduced in this, which is elaborated in the press note, so you'll also get to know that. Anyone from Chandigarh group? Uh, please, uh, middle row. Of the GST automatic transfers to them. But most of the time we heard from Punjab government that we are waiting for our installment to come from the center. Most of the time when they say that, it will be helpful if you can give me specifics of which is that which is waiting. Up the road, media hai ji, powerful hai aap. Prashna pooch sakte hai unse. Pooch karke mujhe batana ki koon sa aisa wait kar rahe hai wo. Monica, Uh Ma'am, I am Monica from the New Indian Express. Ma'am, I need a clarity whether the issue of covering uh, cryptocurrencies under GST was also taken up in today's meeting. No. And ma'am, also there is no clarity whether uh, cryptocurrencies, they come under uh, goods category or services category. So has there any decision been made by the government on this? No. Last two days, the GST, nothing was discussed on this. Okay. Parkash. Ma'am, I am from CNBC. My question is that small and MSME companies were asking for a long time that they should also be able to get the opportunity to participate in an online platform or e-commerce. Did they have a decision in the GST concept? Yes, it has. Which way will they get the support? The business of online people will also be able to do it. There is also a detailing in it. Sir, only if you want to explain. आज के दिन अगर मैं ऑफलाइन करना चाहता हूं तो अगर मेरा टर्नओवर 40 लाख से कम का है तो मैं एक स्टेट में मतलब इंट्रा स्टेट नॉट इंटर स्टेट बट इंट्रा स्टेट में कर सकता हूं ऑफलाइन में बिना रजिस्ट्रेशन लिए हुए और कंपोजिशन कंपोजिट डीलर्स भी कर सकते हैं ऑनलाइन को ये व्यवस्था नहीं थी अगर उनको चार दो रुपये का भी करना था तो रजिस्ट्रेशन लेनी पड़ती थी अब ये फैसला ले लिया है काउंसिल ने कि जो ऑफलाइन में अवेलेबल है वही ऑनलाइन में भी अवेलेबल रहेगा इंट्रास्ट स्टेट वो कर सकते हैं अगर उनका टर्नओवर 40 लाख से ऊपर नहीं जाता है और ना केवल एक स्टेट में इंट्रा स्टेट कर सकते हैं पर एक पैन नंबर एक स्टेट से भी ज़्यादा स्टेट में 
इंट्रा स्टेट सिर्फ इंट्रा स्टेट मतलब हरियाणा में हरियाणा का पंजाब में पंजाब का यूपी में यूपी का कर सकते हैं जैसा कि ऑफलाइन में भी अवेलेबल है तो ये आपने ठीक कहा जैसे एमएसएमई की बहुत मांग थी इस बात को तो ये पूरा कर दिया गया है इसको आईटी में सेटअप करना पड़ेगा ई को इंश्योर करना पड़ेगा एक हमें रिपोर्ट देना पड़ेगा कि कौन लोग इस तरह के हैं तो इसको हम ये उम्मीद करते हैं कि अगले कुछ महीने में इसका पूरा टेक्नोलॉजी सेटअप कर लेंगे और फर्स्ट जनवरी 23 से इसको इम्प्लीमेंट कर देंगे एनी वन फ्रॉम चंडीगढ़ ग्रुप तरुण अदरवाइज मैम तरुण शर्मा फ्रॉम जी बिजनेस मैम मेरे दो सवाल हैं एक है कि जो आप इस मीटिंग में तो वर्चुअल डिजिटल एसेट्स पे डिस्कशन नहीं हुआ तो क्या हम ओ की रिपोर्ट का इंतजार कर रहे हैं क्योंकि उन्होंने डिस्कशन पेपर निकाला है उसके बाद हम वी के जो इको है उस पर टैक्स स्ट्रक्चर पे काम कर पाए और दूसरा मैम क्या जीएसटी टर्मिनल बनाने पे कोई चर्चा इस मीटिंग में हुई यदि हुई तो कब तक आ, हम इम्प्लीमेंट होते हुए देखेंगे आपके पहला प्रश्न का विषय मैंने बोल दी हूँ उसमें और जोड़ने का मुझे कुछ नहीं है ओ है फलना है जिनका नो आई है नथिंग मोर टू एड ऑन इट ऑन दी ट्राइब्यूनल यस there was a discussion there was a, a status report if you may want to say aaj ka halat kya hai aur court se kya kya overall not gst alone overall tribunal ke vishay mein kya kya aaye hain isko hamare js ne ek presentation diya hai uske upar charcha hua detail ke upar kya kya hai vishay isme hum kya karna hai इसमें ये ये निर्णय हुआ है कि एक जी ओ एम फॉर्म करेंगे हम अभी उनका कौन कौन मिनिस्टर्स उसमें सदस्य होंगे अभी रेडी नहीं है वो तय करेंगे आज कल में और उसका रिपोर्ट भी मैंने पहले आपको सूचित की कि फर्स्ट वीक ऑफ अगस्त में जी ओ एम दोबारा आई मीन काउंसिल दोबारा मीट करेगी उसमें उसमें ये एक रिपोर्ट तो ये गेमिंग ऑनलाइन गेमिंग कैसिनोस के ऊपर कॉनराड संगमा जी का रिपोर्ट लेंगे ये एक एजेंडा सेकेंड एजेंडा इस ये आजकल में फॉर्म करने वाले ग्रुप ऑफ मिनिस्टर्स इस महीने के अंदर ही उस विषय के ऊपर ट्राइब्यूनल्स के विषय के ऊपर Uh, आपस में चर्चा करके पूरे उसका फाइनल जीओएम का रिपोर्ट देंगे वो होगा द सेकेंड एजेंडा फॉर द फर्स्ट वीक ऑफ ऑगस्ट मीटिंग एनी वन फ्रॉम चंडीगढ़ फर्स्ट Uh, hi, I'm Neha Sharma from PTC News. I want to ask uh, because there have been discussion that VAT, जो पेट्रोल और डीजल है, that would be put in उसको VAT के डायरे में लेके आया जाएगा. So इसके बारे में कोई चर्चा हुई है? उसको GST में लेके आया. जी जी जी. नहीं, कुछ चर्चा नहीं हुई. There's no discussion. Uh, uh, ma'am, uh, uh, will you give some more clarity on the GOM and gold movement, interstate? Uh, movement and second on this uh, gom on online gaming in casinos will there will be revision on rate only or just ironing out of some issues like on what uh, valuation tax should be imposed <coughs> or will it be 28% or is there need to relook at the rate itself the gom considered all aspects and came with what i have given you briefly as its finding but then of course it's going back to them for the next 15 days they'll come back on 15th july with their um, uh, solutions and on the uh, other one which you asked on the gold do you want to explain that? this is an old gm which was there kerala was heading it so they, right now there is no requirement of eway bills for them so some of the states actually were wanting that so that has been allowed to the states so whichever state wants it for intra state movement and uh, the minimum that has been kept is 2 lakhs otherwise it is 50000 for the others for this it is 2 lakhs and the details that will come in the eway bill will not disclose the vehicle number for security reasons and the so that has been kept into view the details will be there in the press note it's, it's, 
Intrastate, ma'am, not interstate. Intra. Intra, within the state. I N T R A. No, 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 not at all. This is they wanted for compliance for information. This is a compliance related matter as to how to handle it. And it was first headed by the previous finance minister of Kerala. Now, after the changeover, the new finance minister took charge. And therefore, although it has been there since 2019, I think, they have come with the report now. It was more a question of, for security reasons, should we disclose the number in the eBay bill, the name of the driver, the Aadhaar card, the car registration number, and so on. But which is only for within any one state's movement. And that is why the decision taken was, let the state of that particular area decide. Anyone from Chand Chandigarh first? Ma'am, uh, when uh, uh, GST was... Uh, Please introduce first. Uh, Manoj Kumar from Pioneer. So, uh, opposition leaders were lots of questions when we started implementing the GST. But now, uh, very few questions are being asked by the uh, opposition leaders. Before few days, uh, in one of the interview, uh, former finance minister Yashwan Sinha said, uh, demonetization, demonetization was a big scam. What do you say about that? <laughs> uh, next. next. Uh, the last. Um, uh, yeah. uh, hello. I am Prakash Pedashi, who is now so they say. Mira Savale ki do din pehle chattis gat ke mantri T.S. Singh Deo ne chitthi likhi hai aur wo kaha hai ki pehle jo GST council mein faisle hote thay wo aapsi sehmati se hote thay lekin ab majority ke adhar par ho rahi hai aur iski shikayat unho ne ki hai is pe kya kahenge aap? Shikayat kar sakte hai jin ko bhi chahiye kar sakte hai magar GST council mein nirnay aaj bhi सिर्फ एक समय था, which was on lottery related to Kerala, on which the northeastern states were all very worried. Then we took a, that was also not voting, we took a call on how many states want, would you want and so on. उसके अलावा अभी तक कोई भी discussion, inclusive of the lockdown period, more amount to be borrowed for compensation, no decision has been taken by majority voting or any of that kind. It has been a collective decision making. Rahul. Trivasa from India today. Ma'am, we saw a very strange contradiction today that on one hand we found a lot of states opposing any hikes in taxes on items and commodities. On mm -hmm. the other hand, a lot of them were complaining that we want that the compensation set should come to state should continue. Now, in between this, how difficult a task is it for you as a head of the GST Council to even probe the concept of continuation of compensation to states? Rahul, first thing, there was no opposition to any, any increase or anything to do with the rate. There was not one. In fact, as was the suggestion given by the fitment, more or less on everything, it was all right, it should go through. In fact, I'm grateful and I don't want to name and create, uh, you know, unnecessarily interest and curiosity. There were ministers who even said it should just go into agreement. All of us can agree. There is nothing. They are all very well done reports. And if we, uh, there's no need for us to get into detailed discussion on point A, point B, point C. And the moment that was said by one minister, at least three other ministers came one after the other to say, we agree, we should just go on because they're all nicely presented, reasons and logic explained, and the committee and the groups have done very good work. So that has been the prevailing mood since yesterday morning. So there's never been one voice saying, why are you doing this? Not on any issue. So that be clear. Huh? On compensation, I've answered the question. People have answered. Prashant. Prashant from Financial Express. Sir, uh, uh, Madam, uh, the revenue collections have been buoyant in the last uh, four or five months. It has been around 1.4 lakh crore. It touched 1.68 lakh crore in April. So was there any discussion or assessment presented in the meeting, how it is going to fare in the remainder of the year and going forward? 
no presentation done, but Revenue Secretary at one point in time between one agenda to the other, moving from one GOM report to another GOM, took the opportunity to explain that revenue generation is going on all right because of the various steps which every state has taken. The efficiencies in collection have improved. The uh, kind of plugging of uh, leakages have been done from the states. Every state has actively done. And as a result, he didn't have any slide to show, but he read out the numbers of how much it has improved, how much it is likely to be uh, per month on an average, and so on. There was no discussion on it. Last question by Vikas. Hi, ma'am. Uh, Vikas Thoot from the Hindu. Uh, just want to get a sense on the uh, risk-based registration process that we're looking at. Uh, when are we looking to implement it? And you can give us a sort of explanation on how this will work, uh, you know, on what base, what different levels of risk we are looking at. And lastly, how this could affect, say, a startup which has really no major uh, history or background. Basically, suppose there is a unit which is asking for a registration in a news in a in a state which it doesn't exist and has a good record elsewhere, which is available in GSTN. So the risk base will mention that this is fine. Then, based on certain other parameters, it may now the algorithm will have some clauses based on which it will run the algorithm. Suppose there are some addresses, some places which are uh, basically we find in the system that these are actually locations where uh, these kind of